right there. Hi, everyone. So if you're watching this, you are on my YouTube channel. Um, so I'd like to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed, to go ahead and press subscribe or follow me on some of my other social media sites. Um, I am joined today by the lovely Melissa, and she is a licensed tax pro and financial strategist and a California mama of three. She works virtually with creative businesswomen, entrepreneurs, and solopreneurs who light up over their work and freak out over their numbers. I couldn't imagine that happening ever. Like, oh, why right? would you freak what? out? Um, she helps you create accounting systems that flow easily and turn those tax panic attacks into plans of attack. Wow. Like, that sounds yes. amazing. So if you don't already know who I am, I am Jamie Russell, and I am a business strategist that helps creative entrepreneurs conquer their business systems and to dominate their niche by providing Dubsado setup services and other one-on-one -on -one solutions. So you're probably here today to see a video tutorial and specifically about QuickBooks Online and the integration with Dubsado. Um, this seems to be a big pain point for a lot of the entrepreneurial yes. uh, entrepreneurs in that community. And Melissa sees it too because she is in 17 hats, which is very similar in the CRM yeah. space. So the integrations sometimes play well and sometimes don't, and we need to know how to navigate that as business owners. So um, I'm going to toss it over to Melissa for a second. Um, the other thing to know before we get started is that Melissa is going to have a video on her YouTube channel after this one talking about the technical side of QBO. So if after we talk about this, if you're still wanting a visual and want to know exactly how this works and how you integrate the pieces and what that looks like, pop over to Melissa's channel and she's going to walk you through the tech side of QBO and Dubsado um, and 17 Hats and how those things work. And we're just talking today about like best practices and how to use the integration and why you would use the integration and those options. So um, Melissa, like, what have you seen out there? Like, what do you talk to clients about all the time? And, and how does that integration work from your point of view? Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. So, you know, I know that this is a, a very common frustration because people get all excited. They're using Dubsado or maybe 17 hats and they're like, Hey, it talks to QuickBooks and I have QuickBooks. So I'm going to turn it on. And I'm kind of like, whoa, 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 slow down. Because just because two things can talk to each other doesn't necessarily mean they have to. And um, making sure that you have the QuickBooks side of things set up first before you connect the Dubs Auto side of things makes a huge difference um, in not having hot mess accounting when you're going through that. Because I, I've seen it both ways, and you know, it, I, I've practiced the connections and figured out kind of like the map of like, okay, if we're going to do this and we check this box, this is how it's going to work. Or if we're going to do it a different way, because there's a couple different ways that you can connect things to make it really clean and easy for you. Right. So like in your opinion, um, what are things that you've seen as far as the integrations and like using QBO that, um, like it does and doesn't include, like what do you think are some of those common misconceptions when people are using it? Uh, I think the biggest misconception is that it pulls everything over. Um, so regard so whichever program you're using, um, but you know, specifically Dubsado, it only pulls over your invoices. If you're using the expense tracking inside of Dubsado, which a lot of people do, it will not pull that over to QuickBooks. So it's only talking invoice side. So it's going to pull your invoices over and depending on how you set it up, it's going to pull over the payments to QuickBooks, but it's not going to pull over any expenses. And um, it can, depending again, like how you set it up, like it can pull over like the payments or, you know, the like progress billing, that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. So like in Dubsado, I know you can set up income categories. Does that stuff come over into QBO? It does not. I actually just talked to Dubsado about this. So right now, what it does is it creates those invoices and it maps them to one default income category in QuickBooks. So typically it's an income category called services. 
So you can't, so like, it's just going to all lump into one income category by default into QuickBooks. Now that's not to say you can go into QuickBooks and redefine things on that side, but if that's really important to you or whether it's more of a like, okay, it's going to all lump it there. I don't need to have like every single detail because I don't have time for that. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So before we get into specifically like the, the integration itself and like how to make sure like you're getting prepped. Um, I, one thing I know I always tell people is that before you do anything with QBO or Dubsado is figure out like what your bookkeeping procedures are going to be and um, who, sorry, I'm trying to get the view real quick. It doesn't want to, aha. Oh. <laughs> um, so uh, is that if you have a bookkeeper, you're hiring a bookkeeper, like find out what their preferences are and how they want to set things up and and yeah. what that looks like. So in your opinion, like what are some things for people to consider before they just turn it on and create that hot mess? Like what should they be looking at? Um, so one of the big things to consider is, is all your income coming through Dubsado or do you have other income streams? So, you know, if most of your stuff is invoicing, but you may also have digital products and it's all running through some, like it's all going through Stripe. So invoices are going in through Stripe, but then you also have digital products that are going in through Stripe or maybe courses that are going in through Stripe or through PayPal. Cause you could do it with either of those payment processors. Um, if you have, all these different income streams coming in through one payment processor and you connect Dubsado, it's only going to record that part. And then you've got to figure out how to get these other income streams to flow into QuickBooks as well and not like create all this duplicates of income and all that stuff. So it right. can get, it can get messy quick if you don't realize how things start to duplicate inside of QuickBooks. And it's not because QuickBooks is doing something wrong. It's just, you have to know how to tell QuickBooks what is what, so that it doesn't think that every single thing coming in is income and income again, and then income again. <laughs> right. <laughs> can... um, so then the other thing I wanted to mention too, is like when someone's looking for a bookkeeper, like do they have to be local? Like what should they be looking for when they're pairing up with someone to help them handle their books? No. So the nice thing with cloud software, just like with all of us running our businesses, we can hire coaches and consultants that are across the country. And now we can hire bookkeepers and tax professionals that are across the country. So there are a ton of people who are QuickBooks Online certified. And so they're what's called a pro advisor and mm -hmm. they know how QuickBooks works. And then even more specifically, there are a lot of people now that are targeting and working with more online business owners and creative business owners and the type of people that are using Dubsado. So they have, we've taken the time to get to know the tools and how they talk to each other so that we can best advise you and not just kind of go into it blindly and go, oh, well, she wants to hook this up and do that and then go, oh, crap, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> right. So what do you think about hiring on like the, there's a couple of accounting firms like, you know, bench.co and those types of things. Like how is that different from hiring like a pro advisor? So companies like bench or there's like in Dinero, they have their own kind of bookkeeping software that they've created. Um, and so you're not able to connect the things the same way. And I'll be honest, like, I'm not super familiar with how they run their, you know, offices. I know that you're supposed to get some sort of dedicated person mm -hmm. and all of that. But I know like for me, how I run my business is that like, I'm very involved with my clients and like, I'm not just there to be a data entry person and spit out a report at the end of the right. month, you know, like I'm there to answer the questions and troubleshoot the tech side of QuickBooks or Dubsado or Stripe or PayPal or your bank or whatever. Um, and so, and by using a tool like QuickBooks online, you know, it's an industry standard, it's a well-established product and it has a lot of really good support. And if you're working with a pro advisor, we have access 
to even higher level customer support with the company than a normal end user would have. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was along the same lines. What I was thinking too, is it's like, wait, it sort of feels like I'm just hiring a team on like, I already have systems in place. I already have a program. Why would I do this? But I didn't yeah. know if maybe there was a benefit that I was missing. So I you know, like, I I don't want to, like, bash on those companies. I think right. that some of them are really good. And if you're, like, really straightforward service, like, it could work out really well. I don't know right. how they handle things like Stripe and PayPal and merchant right. services versus – because if they're just going through your bank account and categorizing things on your bank account – they're probably missing a ton of stuff because we run we, things through PayPal and through Stripe and weird places that right. never show up on our bank account. <laughs> right. Okay. And so that goes into like the Sato and 17 hats and those types of CRMs. Like, is that enough when it comes to accounting software? Um, because like I know in Dubsado you can run yeah. a profit loss statement. You can pull those data. You can pull that report. Like, is that enough if someone came to you and went, here's my stuff you know, do my books for the end of the year? Or do you need something yeah. like QBO or Zero or another type of third-party software to handle that? So I'll say this. If you're just getting started and you're strictly service-based and you have really like simple expenses, you could probably, you can get away with just tracking your expenses in something like Dubsado or 17 Hats and running a report from there. Um, I think one of the downside is most of these programs that are more CRM focused is that they don't necessarily auto sync with the bank accounts. They don't pull in things. So you're having to manually enter a lot of the expense side of things. Mm -hmm. And then if you have, again, if you have income, that's not, you know, coming through an invoice, then you have to go create these like dummy invoices to make sure that all the income is recorded and it doesn't um, get messed up, you know? So you want to like look at that. But overall, if you're planning on growing, if you want to have like really good reports and be able to like get a better pulse on your business, that's really when it's nice to have a program like QuickBooks, like Zero, that are more robust accounting programs. And they can really give you like detailed reports and give you, you know, a lot more information on your business than just a profit and loss. (laughs) <laughs> okay. That, that makes a ton of sense. Um, yeah. for me, like that's a lot of it's all Greek. It's like, okay, this is my income and my expenses. What more do I need to know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what else is here? Um, so talking along the lines of the integration. So for Dubsado users, when you go in under your brand settings, you'll see a tab marked, um, for QuickBooks, QuickBooks. and you have a couple of check mark options in there on how it talks to, QuickBooks or how QuickBooks talks in into Dubsado and the yeah. integration is technically still in beta mode. So it could be different in the future, but right. um, me and Melissa were talking about how you really have a couple of options with that. Um, so Melissa, do you want to tell them like what those options would look like and how to navigate those options? Right. So the key thing to remember is if you're going to integrate Dubsado with QuickBooks, you want to make sure that most of your income is coming through Dubsado because what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever invoice you created in Dubsado and create that in QuickBooks to match. And so you have, um, so it's going to do that, the invoice, and that's that first checkbox of like, yes, I want to copy over all of my invoices. Mm -hmm. And so what it does, you know, on the QuickBooks side is it's going to show an invoice and depending on what you check on the second box is whether it records the payment directly from Dubsado or whether you need to go in and mark it paid from something else that you've connected. So that second box is, do you want us to count the payments and where do you want us to put those payments? How is that going to work? And so that's um, when you have both boxes checked, that throws off a lot of people because in QuickBooks, when it uh, invoice gets marked as paid, it goes to this holding place called undeposited funds. Okay. And most people are like, ah, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, ah, what do I do with this? So um, you have to manually go into QuickBooks and actually tell QuickBooks what account 
did that payment go into? So did it go through PayPal? Did it go through Stripe? Um, or did you get a payment and it was maybe a check or a direct deposit that went right into your checking account? So you, Dubsado and QuickBooks can't tell each other that information. Dubsado just says, hey, here's an invoice. Hey, it got paid. And you need to tell QuickBooks where the money actually got deposited into. And so a lot of people don't know that second step on QuickBooks. And so they'll sit there and they'll look at their like dashboard and see that they have like, you know, $10,000 worth of undeposited funds. And then they have all this income coming in through Stripe or their bank account or PayPal. And they're like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and that was going to be my question is what type of entrepreneur do you think or business should check mark both of those boxes and who maybe should only check one or like none of them? Like what is, what would be your determining factor on what you should check? So if you are service-based or like 90 or more percent of your income is coming through Dubsado invoicing, then it's totally cool to check both of those because you're not having other random income go into your Stripe or PayPal account from outside sources. And okay. that's going to be the key. Um, and the other thing is you have to be careful if you check that second box that says, I want all the payments to be auto recorded. And if you also on the QuickBooks side have your PayPal account or your Stripe account um, feeding into QuickBooks and it, you don't want to double count that income. So you want to make sure that like, you're not adding the payment from Dubsado and when you go in and like sort through your PayPal or your Stripe stuff that you're adding the payment again because that's where people get messed up the most is that they're adding payments twice and then they're looking at their report and they're going, oh my God, QuickBooks thinks my income is twice as much as it actually is or if they're adding it in PayPal right. and then they're adding it on their checking account when they transferred the money from PayPal to their checking account. Then it looks like it's three times as much as it should be. Right. So yeah. So. Well, and that was my end of the year as I looked at the number and I was like, it'd be awesome if I made that. But I know <laughs> that that's not what I did. <laughs> so I'm like, right where, where's the hiccup? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, like that's great to know because my thought is when a, a lot of people were saying, well, don't check mark those and just use QuickBooks as QuickBooks and use Dipsado as Dipsado. And I know that that's a great way to handle it too. And some yeah. people that aren't using QBO, um, you know, maybe you have zero or wave or whatever are doing them separate. Um, yeah. that's a great way to do it. But I'm like, why would they integrate if you can't use it? Like, why would you have a checkbox if it's not right a usable features so that's good to know that you can utilize it and there is ways to utilize it um now does that matter at all with the fact that like dubsado i don't know how many options you guys have in 17 hats like you can have stripe square and paypal like do you suggest using all three does it matter if you use all three no i think really it's always best to pick one payment processor and only use one okay so i mean i can kind of understand i know people don't love having PayPal as their primary. And so, you know, they'll have it turned on so that if they have an international client, they can use PayPal just for the international person. Um, but it's really better if you limit the options for your clients and how they can pay you. <laughs> right. So if you choose say like one payment processor, or if you had multiple and you decided to have those pull into QBO and like sort of bypass, um, Dubsado, um, what does that look like on the integration? Like do all of those play nicely with QBO or like, how does that look? So PayPal generally plays very nicely with QuickBooks online. Now they have it set up where you can connect it just like you would your checking account or your credit card. Mm -hmm. And it will pull everything in that way. So that's really handy. Stripe does not integrate directly very well. Like they had, they were testing running it as a bank feed. It didn't really work. So I think they turned it off. So it's not an option anymore. No. Um, a lot of people that I work with that are using Stripe, as long as their, you know, their volume through Stripe is not very high we will just end up going in and entering like month end amounts. You know, we'll just enter the total sales, the total fees, 
and then how much was transferred out of Stripe and into your regular checking account. Because right. a lot of times it's just faster. There is um, a third party app that will connect Stripe to QuickBooks. It's called Sush.io. So like oh. Sush.io. Uh, it's See, like, I heard like Piggy or Pennywise or something. There's probably, yeah. I mean, there's a couple. Technically, if you're paying already for like a premium level of Zapier, you mm -hmm. could use Zapier too. Oh, um, so well, you can, could be, no. you can zap things that way from Stripe to QuickBooks online. Um, but you know, it's a little bit more complicated in like making sure you're setting up the, you know, mapping as it's right. called, you know, it's basically like making sure things go to the right place, mm -hmm. um, but you can, you can. And so like, yeah, I was, I was testing out Sushio. It's 19 bucks a month. Right. Um, but you can have like multiple, multiple Stripe and QuickBooks accounts on there. So it's something for me now where right. I have a monthly client and they have a lot of Stripe stuff or their Stripe is their primary. Like I, as the accountant can add them to my Sushio account and just oh. make that part of our monthly fee because it's not costing me a ton of money. I can just have a bunch on there. So I'm like, Oh, well, this is nice. Right. <laughs> right. When I thought about that too, I'm like, I just pay for QBO and I just paid for Dubsado. Like, yeah, I think the person is doing the third party. Like they have so much volume, which means you're making a ton of money. So like you are at that point to spend money on another thing. Exactly. Exactly. So. And you think of it like, you know, we have all these tools in our toolbox and not every tool can do everything, mm -mm. you know? So we right. have to prioritize like what's important to me. Like, do I want to be hand entering Stripe stuff or do I want it to just automatically go in? And then that takes four steps out of the process for me. Is that right. worth 19 bucks a month? Yeah. Okay. That's worth 19 bucks a month for me to say five steps in quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that makes, I like, that's great to think about it that way. Like, I, I like the way that that's thought about. So yeah. Yeah. And Square also, Square does connect directly to QuickBooks online. And as far as I am aware, it's a very clean integration. Right. So again, it kind of acts, they act like bank accounts because again, they're holding accounts for your money. So your money you, you charge a client that full amount goes into these merchant accounts and then the fees are subtracted before they deposit into your bank account. Right. Uh, so technically the money's yours as soon as the client pays, it's just, there's that little hold in between so that the fees can come out and then it can get transferred to your bank account. So, right. So yeah. then the, the other thing, as far as the integration goes is like, um, how does that, and we're talking a little bit about it right now too, is how does that work on the third party fee end? Cause I know that was my issue is everything was talking correctly. And then I'm like, but wait, it makes it look like the client didn't pay their full invoice because mm. the fees didn't get brought over. Like, how do you suggest people working with like the third party fees and how to account for them? And, and yes, yeah, so you have to watch because it should, if you have both boxes checked and it, you know, shows that they paid the invoice, like it should show the full amount of the invoice being paid. Right. And that's where that it, it goes and hides in that undeposited funds. And so you have to right. go find that payment. And then when you are doing the actual, like telling QuickBooks, which is making a deposit, you're telling QuickBooks okay, this money is deposited into Stripe or this money is deposited into Square or whatever. Right. Um, you can add a line item for the fees or sometimes what I'll do is just tell my clients, okay, just you know, record all the payments, record all the payments. And then at the end of the month, we'll go into your Stripe account and pull that report and just enter January Stripe fees and put one entry for the whole month on your Stripe bank account. Right. <laughs> so that now, way the balance is out. Do you have to claim your bank fees? Like, is that mandatory? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what, and, and what, this is something that helps you like actually know your real numbers, not your kind of real numbers. Your real number <laughs> is I charge, I invoice this client a thousand dollars. They paid me through Stripe and Stripe took $15 out as fees. Right. So you need to know that like you made a thousand dollars and you know, technically if you had told the client, Oh, mail me a check, 
then you would have had to wait two to four weeks, but they would have been able to like mail you a check. You would have gotten that full thousand dollars. Instead, you're saying, I want to get paid fast. So I'm going to use something like Stripe or PayPal and they're going to put in their credit card and it's going to come to be fast, but it's going to cost me that $15. So that's right. a legitimate expense. It's a business expense to use these payment processors. And you also want to keep tabs on like what the fees are, because it may be that you're using a certain payment processor and their fees are higher or you know, they're just, it's getting out of hand and you're going, okay, my volume is high enough or my dollar amounts are high enough that I need to go research other options or what's going to be the best option for me so that I'm not paying a ridiculous amount in fees every year. So seeing that number and knowing like, this is how much I pay to Stripe to get paid faster. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I know that that's one a lot of people's um, added benefit to coming to Dubsado and I think even 17 hats is that um, they don't charge an extra fee for using a payment processor where right. um, because Stripe and PayPal are already taking a fee out. And so there's other CRMs yeah. that they'll say, okay, we're going to charge you per invoice on top of what those third parties are charging you. Yeah. And it's just like, wait, we're already getting like 4% taken out anyway. Like why? Right. why yeah. Would you and there's a, there's certain CRMs or invoicing softwares where they kind of like white label the payment processing. Like I know HoneyBook does this. Right. Um, where, what do you mean by white labeling? So what it is, is they're still using Stripe. Right. Like they're still using Stripe to process the payments. The issue is that instead of each individual user connecting their Stripe account or their PayPal account, you have to use HoneyBook's account and then HoneyBook collects the money and they have lower fees because of their volume with Stripe, but then they pass on a certain amount of fee to you as the oh. end user. And so it's HoneyBook payments. Really, it's just Stripe. <laughs> it's, right. So they're charging wow, you whatever okay. your annual or monthly fee is to use the soft, the base software. And then they have their payment processing fees if you're paying through HoneyBook, whereas Dubsado and 17 Hats don't do that, at least on their like normal paid levels, right. you connect your merchant account directly. And so the payment processing doesn't even go through your CRM at all. They don't touch your payments. Right. Well, and I always wondered that too, because I'm like, wait, you get a receipt from the payment processor, you get a confirmation on your invoice from D Dubsado, like, why wouldn't they just merge them together? And now to find out, like it's in our benefit that they didn't yes. merge it together. It so is. Is. <laughs> that's awesome to know. Um, this money. <laughs> so, right. Um, third party fees, just real quick. I know one point of discussion, and I'm curious to hear what you have to say about it is, and I've seen people like in be like brick and mortar when you go and they're like, well, in order to use your credit card, there's an added convenience fee. Like you can use your, con your card, but there's a convenience fee. Right. And I know some people have gotten into the discussion of, you know, can I charge someone for third party fees or do I roll it into my, my price for my service or like, what is the take on it? Like, is it per state? Is it a national Yeah. So thing? technically like each state has their own specific laws on it. I know like here in California, it's illegal for us to upcharge to use a credit card, but it's perfectly legal for us to discount for cash. So it's like you have to have, I know it's I know really <laughs> great, like, but it's how you set your base pricing really is what it is. So in California, your base pricing has to account for the credit card processing fees. And then if you want to offer them, a discount for paying you with cash or direct deposit or whatever, where there's not that same fee, you can give them that discount because it's not cost you the same. You don't have to, but that's an option. Mm -hmm. Other states, it's different where you are allowed to, you know, add on convenience fees and that. And, and businesses, especially, you know, like retail where they're not making a huge profit margin on these items, they're allowed to set like minimum transactions to say like, okay, if you want to use your card, you have to buy at least $5 worth of stuff. Because a lot of times, you know, right. even, even when we're using like Stripe, it's like 2.9% plus 25 cents or 30 cents or whatever. Right. So there's that base 
30 cents or whatever per swipe or per payment. And if they're already losing that, plus the percentage, plus their profit margin on gum and hot dogs is not very high. (laughs) (laughs) That makes sense. I'm literally losing money if I don't at least charge $5. So. Right. Well, and I think that's people's argument is they're like, wait, like the corner store can charge a convenience fee. Like, why can't I do that in my business? And it's like, I don't think they apply the same, but I've, I've never looked into it. I just, I adjusted my, my service pricing, yeah. knowing that I have fees come out. I have expenses come out. I have team expenses. Like, yeah. so my price has to be here to cover those things. Um, but I always wondered, I'm like, can I add a line item? Like, should I be, or I mean, I don't I'm, know. You have to check with your state, but I always think it's best practice is to price high enough to account for all of those things, account right. for the fact that you're going to have payment fees, account for the fact that you have to set some of that money aside for taxes, <laughs> you know, like right. it's good, you know, your, your base software, or like, if you know, you're going to have to go buy supplies or graphics or whatever, like build that all into your pricing rather than sitting there and like line iteming and, you know, ticking everything because honestly, it just, pisses clients off more the more that you have to line item stuff if they're just like right oh, I pay you this much and you take care of everything great so I know that you talked a little bit and this is gonna be our last point as we wrap up um about like when you put things over in QBO or your software there's still steps in QBO or things you have to do um without getting into a long exaggerated list like what are things that you know people should realize like you have things you should be doing weekly or monthly or like what should that look like for a business owner have dubsado connected to quickbooks online is know that those payments recorded are going to go sit in what's called undeposited funds and if you don't so if you have regular quickbooks online right we're talking about like QuickBooks Online, not QuickBooks Self-Employed. Those are two different things. But in QuickBooks Online, there's this little magic plus button. And I'll show you guys on my video, like when I'm actually screen sharing, but there's a little plus button and I call that the magic plus button. And that's where you have shortcuts (laughs) to everything. And it says bank deposit. So you're going to have to click that plus button, go to bank deposit, and then create a deposit for every payment that you receive. And so it can become a really simple, quick thing if you stay on top of it. And then, you know, if you're using Stripe, then you deposit it into your Stripe account first, not your bank account, but your Stripe account first. If you're, you know, doing PayPal, then you deposit it into the PayPal account. And that way, that's actually telling QuickBooks, like, yes, this invoice got paid and it actually got put into a bank account. So it's not just like I have a stack of checks sitting on my desk that people have paid me, but I haven't put in the bank account. That's why undeposited funds exists is like back in the day before everybody was using payment processors, you would get the check from your client. And so you want to mark the invoice that like, okay, this client has paid me, but you hadn't actually taken it to the bank yet because you only do your deposits on Fridays or whatever. And so you'd have all these checks sitting there in deposited funds. And then on Friday, you would mark them all that you took them to the bank. That's how, that's how, that's the process, like the thinking behind why that is. And so now we're, it's a more automated process for us to actually get our money, but we still have to tell QuickBooks like, Hey, yes, this got paid and I put it in this bank account. Right. And that's going to like immediately help fix your accounting. <laughs> and then if you decide to connect Stripe or connect PayPal or connect Square also directly to QuickBooks, you want to make sure that you're not going into those transactions and adding them as income you want to you know if if you have the invoice marked as paid and you receive five hundred dollars and you already told quickbooks that money went into stripe then when you're going and adding your stripe transactions you don't want to see that five hundred dollar payment and add it as income again you want to exclude it and not count it because Otherwise, QuickBooks oh. is going to think you got paid $500 and then you got paid $500, but it's actually the same $500. <laughs> so in your opinion, which is easier, like bringing in like Stripe and PayPal and all of those accounts and just excluding 
or excluding QuickBooks and bringing them in from your bank accounts? Which do you think is the easier process? So the, if you're basically just getting paid through Dubsado, through one of the three merchant accounts, and you don't have anything else really going in there, it's easier to connect Dubsado directly, receive the payments, and then at the end of the month, you know, you'll pull out your Stripe statement or your PayPal statement, your bank statement, and make sure to add anything that's missing, like the processing fees and things okay. like that. Um, that's the easiest way if you're primarily using Dubsado. If you have income coming into Stripe or PayPal from three different places, so maybe you invoice through Dubsado, but you also have it set up in Acuity where people can book a strategy call and they pay through PayPal or Stripe when they book an Acuity and you have things on Teachable or Thinkific and you have a couple digital products on your website that go through whatever shopping cart system and get deposited, then I would say just don't connect Dubsado and Great. just connect the payment account and record the income and any expenses through that payment processor feed. So through the PayPal feed, through the Stripe feed, um, right. And just record it that way as it comes in, because then there's less steps of back and forth than like, oh, well, I already counted that one because I counted it through Dubsado and I, but I didn't count this one because it came through Acuity. And so that's right. where, yeah. And then the main like good thing about connecting Dubsado, even if you only check the top box and connect the invoices is that when you log into QuickBooks and you go to the sales tab, mm -hmm. it has this pretty little bar across the top and it's going to tell you how many invoices are outstanding, how many invoices have been paid, how many partial payments, all of that stuff. And if you, and I know that like Dubsado kind of has that, but it's not the same laid out visually. And so if you want, like when you're going in Dubsado, you're thinking about individual projects and managing individual projects and taking care of your clients and that kind of stuff. If you want QuickBooks to be the place that you go when you're just trying to get a snapshot of your finances and you want to know, like, do I have invoices that are overdue that haven't been paid? I want to see that in a quick, easy way. Then that's a good reason to connect Dubsado and QuickBooks. Okay. Wow. So in this time, we've gotten a lot of just like great information and I hope that we brought a lot of clarity to how you're using um, QuickBooks as well as Dubsado. One thing I wanted to also make sure was clear is anything that we've talked about is about QuickBooks online. So if yes. you're using self-employed or QuickBooks business or any other product, it has to be online yeah. if you're integrating it in with Dubsado. Now you can choose one of the other products and use them separate. But yeah. if you want to integrate, it only integrates with online. Yes. Um, so know that about whatever you have or if you're choosing to purchase one to make sure it's the online version. Mm -hmm. um, and then Melissa is going to do more of a technical um, how to and talk about her magic plus sign button. Yes, the magic plus sign button. button. <laughs> um, and how to really like navigate the, the integration now that we've talked about all the concepts and the best practices. So if you're interested in that, definitely look in the link. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way down. Um, and check out anything on Melissa's end as well. She's really well known in the entrepreneurial community. And great resource today. Hope to see you with the next Yay. video. See you guys.